Okay, so here we have a figure that shows the output pattern measured by a tiny microphone when two loudspeakers separated by 15 uh, are pointed away toward a microphone 1.5 meters away. Data is collected. Speed of sound is 343. We have a graph uh, showing the uh, sound intensity at the microphone. Um, as a function of position um, and we need to figure out the frequency at which the speakers were driven okay so um, this is a sort of a direct application of uh, 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 Young's double slit experiment where uh, the two sources of light in the double slit experiments are uh, uh, illustrated here by the two speakers and uh, the receiver on the screen um, is uh, could be illustrated here by the fringe width that we can figure out from the graph now uh, Let's take a look at uh, the double slit experiment because I don't want to just give you the formula. I want to show you how to get it. So if we have a double slit experiment, so we have the first slit here and we have the second slit. And let's say that the receiver is here. And uh, this is the, uh, so this is S1. This is S2, and let's say that they are separated by distance A, which is very small compared to the separation uh, between the position of the slits and the receiver. So let's call this S. And uh, let's say that these two uh, will be uh, out of phase here. Oops, uh, just thing didn't let me do it appropriately. Uh, so uh, let's see that, let's say that this here is R2 and this here is R1. And uh, let's just say that this is the horizontal here. So this angle here would be theta. Now if I drop, oops. And this is point P here. And uh, Okay, let's do some geometry on this figure to see how we can relate the angle uh, with, uh, or how to relate the uh, 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 where the central maximum will happen, um, assuming uh, that this is y here. So the distance from here to here is y, where we see the fringe. And uh, if I drop a perpendicular here to this line, this is 90 degrees, I know that this angle here is theta. So a straight forward geometry will tell you, uh, oh, so if, if R1 and R2 are very long, the path difference between them is their difference. R1 minus R2 is captured by this piece here. So this piece here is R2 minus R1 and we know that R2 minus R1 will equal to A sine theta and at the same time we know that uh, theta is very small so from Taylor series we know that sine theta is approximately equal to theta 
So that will tell us that R2 minus R1 is equal to A theta. And if I look at this triangle here, I could see uh, that uh, sine theta will also equal uh, now let me let me show you here that if I also connect uh, this line here with the same point P this angle here is also theta right because we are saying that uh, R1 and R2 are very very long to a point that they're almost the same which means they're almost parallel to each other they're almost on top of each other since the distance is very long so we can we can sort of do this approximation and uh, if we do this approximation uh, then we also have uh, from this triangle from uh, not this triangle but the uh, this triangle here this is 90 we can see that sine theta which is almost theta is approximately equal to y over s so sine theta which is almost theta is approximately equal y over s so now uh, plugging this back into the gold equation I will get the path difference r2 minus r1 equals a it will replace theta with y over s Okay, uh, now uh, this path difference uh, will equal uh, an integer multiple of the wavelengths so that these two waves would actually overlap if their path difference the difference between both of them is an integer multiple of wavelengths so if the difference so if r1 is off r2 by lambda and lambda represents the whole wave so if you're at, so so this is since this is a sine wave or a cosine wave so if you're past it if you if you lead it or lag it by lambda or 2 lambda or 3 lambda or 4 lambda any integer multiple of lambda uh, then uh, these two waves uh, will meet uh, will meet and and uh, and overlap uh, as as discussed here at a uh, uh, at the same point p okay and so that means from this I know that r2 minus r1 has to equal m lambda with m being an integer so uh, from these two equations I see that m lambda has to equal a y over s y m for that specific m because there's many centrals minimums and maxes so then y m will equal uh, m s lambda over a so so that's for one maximum now if I were to take the next maximum up that would just be the next m so y of m plus 1 will just equal m plus 1 times s lambda over a and if I need to figure out the difference in positions of these two consecutive maxes I can subtract y m plus 1 minus y m will equal to uh, the difference of these two so I will get m plus 1 s lambda over a 
minus m s lambda over a. Uh, if we uh, foil this through and subtract, this guy will cross out, and we will get delta y, delta y, which in our question, by the way, uh, represents the fringe width that we can read from the graph. So delta y will equal s lambda over a. So this is the final formula from the double slit experiment on how to relate the fringe width uh, to the wavelength. Uh, the distance uh, the distance of separation between the two slits and how far the receiver is from the from the slits and now I can solve for the wavelength. I'm, I'm being asked for the frequency uh, so I need the wavelength I have the speed of sound so if I have the wavelength I can solve so I will get lambda to equal delta y times a over s now uh, we know from the from the graph that the fringe width is about 1.43 if you look if you read it from the graph centimeters we know that the two slits are separated by 15 centimeters so that's a and the distance between the between the speakers and the microphone uh, that's our s is 150 plugging this in we will get 1.43 times 15 divided by 150. We know that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And so that means the frequency has to equal the velocity over the wavelength. So uh, that is just uh, velocity is 343 uh, over lambda so I could just flip this guy here so times 150 over 1.43 times 15 uh, the thing is I will get a factor of this is centimeters 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 so I still have a factor of a centimeters so I can multiply this by 10 to the minus 2 to change it to meters because this guy here is in meters per second and finally I would get the frequency to be if we plug this on the calculator we will get Uh, we will get uh, 2398.6 hertz or if you want to express it in kilohertz you divide it by thousand so that's 2.3 or 2.40 kilohertz so that gets us the frequency of this Oops, sorry about that and uh, 
this is of course a um, uh, the, the reason that it has a central minimum is because this is a Young's experiment with the sources being out of phase with each other so sources out of phase and that's why we get a central minimum that doesn't 